Hello, my dear class 10 students. I hope you are all well and keeping yourselves busy. So it's been a little long, but today uh, we'll continue from where we left uh, in our last class. Clear? So we have finished, uh, we are in chapter 10, that is light physics portion, and we have finished the introduction part. Clear? So introduction part is over and we have finished, uh, we, we have completed with the reflection of light, the laws of reflection, and then uh, we have studied like uh, details in, uh, about the convex mirror and concave mirror. Clear? So in the last class, I have given you an example of concave mirror. So today I will give uh, an example of convex mirror. Okay, convex mirror. So convex mirror, students, it is the reflecting surface bulges outward, right? Let's see, reflect the reflecting surface bulges outwards. So the uses of convex mirror, it is used as a rear view mirror in vehicle, okay? Rear view mirror in a car, clear? And the second, there are many uses, but these are the important uses, okay? And the second important uses is at traffic junction. At traffic junction. And the third important uses is at shop, okay? At shop uh, to check the theft, clear? At shop to check the theft. Now in exam for objective question, they might ask you, why do we use like a uh, convex mirror as a rear view mirror in a car or at traffic junction or at shop? Then the reason is convex mirror gives you what? Convex mirror gives you a virtual, virtual erect image, clear. If it is virtual means it is always erect, uh, clear. And then the size is diminished. That means it is small, okay? Diminished means it is small, diminished. So you can just try it at a home or, or, or you can just see the rear view mirror in a car. You will see, uh, you'll get to see a wider field of view. You'll see everything is erect and the size will be dim diminished, but, but you'll see a greater picture, clear? So th that is the reason. So we are done with the uses of convex mirror. And today, the important part uh, of this uh, chapter here is you have to know how to draw a ray diagram, okay? Ray diagram, ray diagram. So this is important. And then uh, we have concave, the mirror part and the lens part. So today we'll uh, discuss about and we'll practice uh, drawing this ray diagram image formation for the mirror. Clear? So I'll give you some rules. Okay, so students now we'll discuss about the rules, okay? Rules which will be needing to draw a ray diagram for a concave mirror as well as convex mirror. So. This is a con concave mirror, right? So this is convex and this is concave mirror. And now I'm sure you remember the important definitions related with this spherical mirror, okay? Convex and concave are spherical mirror, right? So now you have to know the definitions which we have discussed, but I'll quickly repeat this. Now the midpoint, the midpoint of the reflecting surface is known as pole, which is represented by P, clear? And then this you have to uh, imagine as it has been cut off or it has been taken off from the circle. So the center point, this is C, okay? Now C here is center of curvature, okay? Center of curvature. center of curvature, and then, now, the line joining this P and C. Which is the line? This is the line, right? So this line is known as principal axis, okay? So principal axis is simply the line joining the pole and the center of curvature. And then, there is a point between the pole and the center of curvature. So that is the principal focus, and it is 
represented by uh, block letter F. Okay, so this is principal focus. And then uh, the distance between the pole and the principal focus, it is denoted by the small f, which is known as focal length. Clear? Focal length. So these definitions and these points you should remember before we start with, uh, with the rules. Clear? So first we'll discuss about the rules to draw a ray diagram for the concave mirror. Okay? So students, this is concave mirror, and then this is the rule number one. So we have a principal focus here, center of curvature here, and pole here. So now the rule number one says that, now uh, suppose a ray of light is coming from this direction, okay? A ray of light is coming from this direction. Then a ray of light, so this is the ray of light. Okay, students, this is the ray of light, and this, the ray of light parallel to principal axis. See, this is the ray of light, and then this is principal axis. So they are parallel, right? So once this light hits the mirror after reflection, it comes back to, it goes through this focus, okay? So after hitting the mirror, it is reflected back and it passes through this focus. Clear. So this is the rule number one. A ray of light parallel to principal axis after reflection, it comes through this focus. Now, uh, the main thing students forget is they forget the direction. So you have to show this direction. Clear? Just this direction. If you miss out this direction, you'll lo you, you won't get half mark. Clear? Even if your answer is right, uh, you, you won't get full mark. So you have to show these directions. So first, a ray of light is here. It's parallel with principal axis. Once it hits the mirror, it will, it will pass through the focus. Clear? Now, second rule. So for second rule, I'll, I'll draw here. Clear? So students, we have, we have the focus here and center of curvature. Now the second rule says that a ray of light, okay, a ray of light can be like in any direction, right? So this one was parallel. So now a ray of light, if it passed through this focus, clear? Now if a ray of light passes through this focus, it's coming from this direction, clear? If it's coming from this direction, then after hitting the mirror, it will become parallel, clear? it will become parallel. So we are done with two rules. We have just four rules. And uh, once, if you know these four rules, then to draw an image formation will be very simple. And then every year in board exam, you'll get at least one diagram, at least one numerical, an MCQ question from this chapter. Clear, so this chapter, it carries more mark. So now the second rule is a ray of light, once, uh, if it passed through the focus, then it will become parallel, clear. So we are done with the second rule. Now let's discuss about the third rule. Students, this, is, this will be our third rule. Again, third rule is very simple. Third rule is very simple. We have here our concave mirror. Clear? Our concave mirror, this is the reflecting surface. And then this is the principal focus. This is the center of curvature. Now the third rule says that if the ray of light passes through this center of curvature, okay? Suppose if a ray of light comes from this center of curvature, then it, reflected back, it, it, it gets reflected back to its same direction, okay? It will go back to its same direction. So here, you have to show the direction in this way. It goes back and then it comes back in the same direction, okay? So the third rule is pretty simple. A, lay, a ray of light, if it passes through the center of curvature, it will go back to the same direction. Clear? These two are opposite, right? This one. Uh, parallel will pass through focus. Focus will become parallel. So one and two are opposite. It's the same. And the third one, if it passes through the center of curvature, it goes back to the same direction. Clear? 
And now students, for the fourth rule, do you remember in the last class I have discussed about the law of reflection, where angle of incidence, angle I is equal to angle R. We have discussed about that. So we'll apply this law in our fourth rule. So here is our concave mirror. And then the same thing, we have our center of curvature and focus and the pole. So now the third rule or the fourth rule, this is the last rule. If a ray of light is incident at the pole, okay? See now our, the ray of light, that means the source of light. It can be from the sun or it can be anything, okay? If it hits the pole, then it will get reflected back to the other side. Clear? So this direction you have to pay attention. It goes here and after reaching, hitting this mirror in the pole, it will reflect it back on the other side of the principal axis. So that means you have to remember that this is uh, angle I, angle R, right? Angle I, angle R. So this, the fourth rule, follows the law of reflection. Clear? So we are done with the image formation uh, rules to draw the image formation for concave mirror. And applying these four rules, we can draw any ray diagram. Clear? Okay, so students, now we are done with the rules. Okay, so now we'll apply the rules by drawing the ray diagram. Clear? So I'll draw a map here. Okay, in this chapter, what you need is that we have a ray diagram. Okay, ray diagram ray di diagram for concave mirror and then convex mirror clear so you should be able to draw this and then this is for concave lens and then con concave convex lens clear so we have two types of ray diagram here one is for the mirror and the other one is for the lens so now we are in this portion okay we are in this part. So now here you have to know that for concave mirror, we have six ray diagram, clear? So it depends on the position, six ray diagram. So for, uh, to draw a ray diagram, we need an object, okay? Because uh, we have six objects, position of the object, clear? The first position of our object would be at infinity. Infinity. That means the object is at infinity. So you don't know the position. Clear? And the second position would be beyond C. Beyond C. Clear? And the third position would be at C. The fourth position would be between between C and F. Now the fifth position would be at F. And the last one would be between P and F. So students, these are the five positions. The object will be at here, would stand at this position, and we have to know what kind of image will, we will get uh, by applying this rule. Clear. So first, let's try the infinity one. Okay, so students, this is our concave mirror, okay? Concave mirror. And then to, uh, to get an image, we need two reflected ray. Clear? We have to apply two rules. I have given four rules, right? So to get an image, we need two rules. So now, this is the focus. This is the center of curvature. And this is the pole. Now the first here, the first one, the position of the object is at infinity. That means for infinity, we don't know where the object is at. So for this, let, we can take example sun. Clear? We know that sun exists, right? Do you know the position where sun is? No. It's quite far away, right? But we know that there is a sun. So for infinity, you can take example sun, okay? So since we don't know the object, we, we will not draw anything here. And then we can expect anything, the light rays coming from here, upside or from the downside. So like I said, 
a ray of light parallel to principal axis will pass after hitting the mirror will pass through this focus right and then the other light ray from the downside clear so students now see where does the intersection take place two ray of light are meeting here right and do you see the size of the image would be very small see it's a point size it's will say point size or highly diminished that means an object like sun in a concave mirror at position or uh, infinity the size of the image would be the size of the image would be point size okay point size point size students uh, this ray diagram you have to practice and you have to uh, try at home clear because just by looking uh, you will not get it clearly so you have to practice along so now the our, the size of the image is point size and then we got the intersection for real right so the nature the nature of the image nature of image would be real inverted and then the position of the image where did we got the image we got the image at f so position of the image is at f clear so students when the object is at infinity the size that we get in the mirror is a point size and then the nature of the image since we got the intersection for real it is real and inverted okay now you have to uh, keep it like very clear that if we are getting a real image it will be always inverted okay and then the position of the image where did we get the intersection from the diagram we can make out that the two ray of light clashes at here so that means at f clear so you can practice and then we will continue with the other uh, position like the second third fourth tomorrow clear so for now you just practice this one go through the rules clear so we'll continue in the next class